I consider our Pee Wee a Jamestown Lakers team very fortunate. Unlike so many other teams, both locally and nationally, we got to cross the finish line of our season by winning the Western New York Amateur Hockey League Championship. What we did not have the chance to do was to draw a season to a close with a traditional end of the year banquet. However, I miss the rink, the game, and especially these kids each and every day. Thus, here's a virtual end of the season celebration so that I can acknowledge the 14 young men who laughed, cried, cheered, and grew to be a band of brothers this season. Mikhail was the youngest player on the team this year, having the only 08 birth year, and the only player to have not played with all of these players before. As such, it's often a challenge to play with a new group of players. Walking into a new locker room can be scary. It's tough to find a niche and develop friendships. However, that was not a problem for Mikhail, which is both a compliment to him and the other 11 players for being welcoming. Mikhail was able to come right in and fit in well with the group. He's a very talented skater who works hard in the offseason to get that way. He plays summer league, he goes to camps, and he's often a mainstay at open skate. He's an Ironman who played all 34 games this season, tied for fourth on the team in scoring with 11 goals, 15 assists for a total of 26 points. Mikhail also scored one of the loveliest and most important goals of the season when, in the Hamburg game in our home tournament, he skated in all alone from the neutral zone and finished with a dirty dangle to push the score to 2-0 in the third period. That goal gave us all the confidence in the world and allowed us to go ahead and crush Hamburg. Donovan continues to improve each and every season by adding new skills and pieces to his stout, conservative defensive play. This season saw Donovan take 34 shots on net, a result of his increasing confidence in the offensive zone and vastly improved wrist shot. As a result of growing like a tree, Donovan's reaches like no other on the team. With a quiet confidence and sound stick on puck play, he's able to force the attacking forwards out of their lanes to the net and push them to the boards, allowing more time for back checking forwards to come and help. Donovan also creates a lot of frustration in practice when the forwards are trying to work on something, and Donovan simply shuts them down. Perhaps Donovan's best game of the season was against Olean. Coach Jack Windsor matched him up with one of the league's best players, Riley Keller, the entire game, and Riley managed just one assist in our 5-1 win. While it might seem to the outsider that Donovan is a quiet, conservative soul, the team knows that Donovan has a very goofy side that has the ability to crack up his teammates in the locker room. Seeing him with his copious hair spiked or his head through the sleeve of his jersey is not an uncommon occurrence. Donovan played all 34 games this season, leading the team in defensive stops with 70. He also contributed on the offensive end with two goals and six apples for eight points, and he tied a career high in goonery with four penalties. Owen can only be described as dominant. He's a true 200-foot player, controlling the play in the offensive zone and often drawing the responsibility to shadowing the other team's best player in the defensive zone. Owen's combination of size, skill, and hockey awareness is uncanny and allows him to play every skating position well. While his size and strength certainly help, it's his heart and leadership that set him apart. Owen will be the first player to congratulate another on a goal and always looks to point out a player who made a great pass or a defensive stop. Of the many Owen highlights this season, for me the game at Livingston in early January is one that was particularly memorable. In a game we needed to win on the road after a long break, we came out rusty and sluggish. Owen put the team on his shoulders and netted a natural hat-trick and ended up with a total of five goals in that 6-3 win. It was his sheer determination that carried us to victory in that game. Owen wore the captaincy more than anybody else this year, this year because of his leadership, both on and off the ice. He particularly likes playing against Fredonia, having seven goals in the two games against them, one of which ignited a furious Laker comeback and quieted a raucous Steeler crowd. O finished the season with 81 points in 34 games, 62 goals, and 19 assists, a stat that can show his shooting ability. Owen scored on 32% of his 194 shots. To be a goalie, you have to be a different kind of person. To be a goalie on a very good hockey team means that there will be some games where you don't have much to do. And as any player will tell you, it is the hardest job in the world to stay warm, flexible, and focused. That's more mental than physical. Logan is the goalie that other teams routinely point out as the best in the league. The first time you see him, you think, okay, kid net's really small, shouldn't be a problem, just get some shots. And then the game starts. 
and Logan's competitiveness becomes apparent. Logan simply doesn't give up bad goals. He doesn't get scored on in the first shot, or often even the second shot, because he's as quick as a cat and he refuses to ever give up on a play. Because he knows the game as well as anyone, when Logan gives his teammates tips or even decides to raise his voice in anger, he is correct 100% of the time. Everyone, including the coaches, listen and takes his opinions as gospel. Logan played in all 34 games this season and finished with an 88.2 save percentage. For comparison, teams that we faced had a 77.4% save percentage against us. Logan had a 2.29 goals against average. On a team that averages over five goals a game, it's almost unfair for the Lakers to have a goaltender as outstanding as Logan. Logan had a bunch of impressive games this season, but the one that sticks out is the 5-1 win over previously unbeaten Olean, the highest scoring team in the league. After giving up a goal just 27 seconds into the game to one of our rivals, Logan could have put his head down and gotten frustrated. Instead, he rallied his teammates and put on a show, making the next 16 saves and earning us the big W. Canyon is a natural goal scorer with a knack of getting shots to the net from tight quarters. He's got a wicked wrist shot, but a vastly underrated backhand and scored plenty of goals with both. As a result of his unique scoring touch, Canyon has a 27% shooting percentage. Canyon was third on the team when scoring, with 24 goals and 13 assists for a total of 37 points. He played in 32 of our 34 games this season, a welcome development over seasons past, which made him more than a point a game producer. Canyon's best game of the season might very well have been against Hamburg on the road in late December. He had two goals and assist, one defensive stop, two great passes, and four shots on goal in that tilt. Canyon might be our own Mr. October, as he had two goals, or two points, excuse me, in three consecutive games early in the season. Another 200-foot player, Jackson is one of the Lakers' most versatile players. He tied for fourth on the team in scoring with a career-high 26 points in 33 games. He had eight goals and finished second on the team with 18 assists. Very much at home in the defensive zone, Jackson was also second amongst forwards with 29 defensive plays. One thing that you can count on Jackson for is never getting tired. In the game at Wheatfield in which we were short players, Jax played the final six minutes of the second and the entire third period, only getting to sit down when he was called for a two minute tripping penalty. It was a good thing he got that penalty though because he needed some water. Jax had a hat trick against the Niagara Junior Purple Eagles on the road in late November and he has a very high hockey IQ and uses his understanding of the game to always be in the right place at the right time. As Coach Mazurko says, he's at his best when he's being a pest, frustrating the opponents with positioning and effort. A defenseman's defenseman, Cole is our most physical blue liner. Cole considers the area in front of Logan to be reserved for Lakers and Lakers alone, and Cole is not afraid to move any opponent out of Logan's line of sight. He's worked hard to improve his shot. His slap shot from the point gave the Lakers yet another offensive weapon this season. This was especially true in the power play when he had a bit more time to unload his cannon. In Cole's 33 games, he led all defensemen with 16 points on 5 goals and 11 assists. He also led the blue line in penalties with 19, again a testament to his physicalness and willingness to do the dirty work in front of the net. Cole also played the important role of Team DJ. While his musical selections were not really in the wheelhouse of the coaching staff, the players could often be seen singing and dancing both before and after the games, lightening the mood and easing the pressure of game day. Cole's best game of the season might very well have been the, against the Buffalo Stars at home on November 23rd. Cole finished with four defensive stops and also had an assist on the offensive end in the 5-1 win against a team with one of the league's very best players. Finishing second on the team in scoring, Parker had 40 goals and 21 assists for a total of 61 points in 33 games. Park had the best shot on the team, a hard snapshot that releases off his stick in the blink of an eye. He found a home on the left point on the power play. It was from this position that he was able to quarterback the team when we had the man advantage by using his passing ability to create open looks for teammates or his shot to create rebound chaos in front of the opposing net. Parker's hustle and physical play also led to a team-high 27 penalties, usually the result of his strength against players who weren't as strong in their feet as he. 
Parker scored on a remarkable 35% of his shots this season. And perhaps Park's best game of the year came in a five-point effort against Lockport. Parker had three goals, two assists, and a hat-trick of penalties in the 11-4 road win on October 13th. Finally, it was Parker's game winner in overtime that sealed the championship game in the Cleveland tournament this season. Cameron is another of the Lakers' solid stay-at-home defensemen. Cam's skating has improved by leaps and bounds this season as he continued to work in practice on his forward-to-backward-to-forward pivots. Cameron keeps offensive players off guard with his unpredictability. Sometimes, he'll attack a puck-carrying forward and force a quick decision with the puck. Other times, he'll back up and he'll allow his Laker teammates to catch the opponent from behind. You never really get a feel for how Cameron's going to play you, and that's scary as a forward. Cam finished the season with five assists, three of which came in a 7-1 win over the Southtown Stars on October 19th. One of his best games of the season was the 4-4 tie at Batavia in December. Cam led the team in two categories that day. He had four defensive stops and three tape-to-tape -tape passes. Cameron's a very serious player who expects the best of himself each and every time he hits the ice. And he played all 34 games this season with five points, all assists. He was third on the team in defensive stops with 50. Ben started the season on fire with a goal and an assist in our very first game, a 5-1 win at home against Livingston. As a blue liner, Ben absolutely enjoys the competitiveness of the games. Some players live for 7-0 blowouts. Ben is not that player. In some of the most pressure-packed moments of the season, when everybody else's knuckles are white and the coaches are reminding the players and each other to breathe, Ben will be seen smiling ear to ear and exclaiming loudly, This is so fun! How can you not love playing for and with a guy like that? Watching Ben play, you can see that the best is yet to come. He always has his head up. He knows where to be and what to do. On occasion, he might make a puck error, but this is because he's his head's up and he's looking for his teammates instead of the puck at his feet. When Ben gets everything put together, he is absolutely going to be a force. Perhaps Ben's best effort of the season was that 9-2 win over Fredonia at home. Ben led the team with five defensive stops in that game. He also had three tape-to-tape -tape passes, one for an assist. In his 34 games, Ben finished with one goal and eight assists for nine points. He was second on the team in defensive stops with 52. Stothy took time out from his own team to play in four games for us this season. He finished with a perfect save percentage of 100%, having saved that one very tricky shot. Stothy practiced against these boys more often than not, making sure that his development as a quality goaltender was on track. Stothy is a fundamentally sound goaltender who plays a very quiet game. This is because his positioning almost never requires him to get out of position. He's always square to the shooter. Carson is the player that every team needs, a player willing to do the work in the defensive end that doesn't necessarily translate to the score sheet, but whose efforts absolutely result in wins. His success is not measured in point totals, but in how few goals his line surrenders while he's on the ice. That said, Carson's no slouch in the offensive zone. Having played all 34 games, Carson found the net nine times and had 12 assists this season. He's a quiet leader, but he's not afraid to let his teammates know if he thinks something's not right. As a defensive forward, he had 22 defensive stops this season, third on the team for forwards. Carson's best game of the year was a 5-1 win over the Buffalo Stars. Carson had a goal, two assists, two stops on defense, and two tape-to-tape -tape passes with three shots in that game. And that is the stat line of an essential two-way teammate. Kyler is our team's best defensive forward. It was Kyler that we looked to to neutralize the opponent's best player. It should come as no surprise then that Kyler led the team in defensive stops with 38. A quiet leader, Kyler's a tough customer, physical and willing to do anything it helps, anything he can to help the team win. Despite suffering a tough knee injury at Wheatfield, Kyler played 27 games this season. He finished with six goals and 13 assists for a total of 19 points. Wojo served as captain for several games due to his leadership and his team-first style of play. Kyler's specialty was chasing down opposing forwards from behind with his furious backchecking. While that's something not reflected on the score sheet, it was Kyler who got some of the biggest cheers of the season from his teammates for his selflessness and his effort. 
Kyler's best game of the year might very well have been our home shutout win over Hamburg. Kyler was all over the ice in that one, supporting the team with a goal, an assist, three defensive stops, and six tape-to-tape passes. Solomon played in seven games this season and was one of only four players on our team who averaged a point per game. Saul finished with four goals and three helpers and played both wing and center. He's a pass-first player who delights in seeing his teammates score more so than scoring himself. Saul had two goals and an assist in a late December game at Leisure against Hamburg, and he had a big goal in the league championship against Wheatfield. Saul also knows that the game is played on both ends of the ice, and as such, always makes sure to hustle back and take care of his defensive responsibilities. He does all of this while having a huge smile on his face. I also need to mention the hours of volunteer work put in by all of our families in driving kids to practices and games, working the scoreboard, manning the boxes, keeping the score sheets, supporting the officials, and welcoming in opposing teams and parents and making them feel at home in our arena. While we all know that often when visiting a rink, the best we can hope for is to be ignored, I'm proud that that doesn't happen in Jamestown. At almost every game, opposing coaches and parents seek me out and tell tell me how classy our fans and players are. As I tell the kids, Lakers respect the game and everyone who loves it. Thank you for being role models for our kids and other organizations. I also need to thank Tanya Brown and Beth Kresge for the amazing work they do. As a member of the board, Tanya represents our team brilliantly. She's insightful, caring, and a joy to be around. She also sets up all the fundraisers that allow our teams to go to tournaments and have so many other niceties that other teams don't have the opportunity to have. Beth never ceases to amaze me in her role as team manager. We never need to worry about having referees lined up, moving ice times, scheduling games, reserving hotel rooms, or getting a tournament that suits our team. Beth always has it under control. She makes it so easy for the coaches and the players to just focus on the business of hockey. So thank you, Beth. I also need to thank my coaches. Each one of them brings something different to the table, and together the puzzle just works. Tom Mazurko is a relentless cheerleader and energy guy who always knows exactly the right thing to say before a game to get the kids fired up. He also is not above texting a mid-game suggestion or two. I keep waiting for the day the headsets appear courtesy of Enterprise Chirono so that he can reach us from the top row of the arena. Jack Windsor, in his second year of running the defense with me, is a quiet but driven leader who somehow managed to finish his senior year of college while coaching. His understanding not only of the game, but of our four defensemen's personalities is invaluable. I mean, think about it. The personalities of Ben, Donovan, Cameron, and Cole couldn't be more different, and Jack just knows how to handle and support each one of them beautifully. And then Troy. Troy jumped to my aid way back at ADM, and he hasn't looked back, thankfully. With baseball being his first love, he'll tell you that he doesn't really know hockey as much as he'd like, that he really isn't an X's and O's guy. But... Hockey isn't a game of planning, of positioning, or drawing schemes on a chalkboard. Hockey is a game of courage, of effort, passion, and playing for your teammates. And nobody conveys that message better than Troy. Troy wants to win, but only if we win the right way. Troy reminds us in both hockey and in life that there are no shortcuts. You play hard, you play fast, you play smart, and you play for the player next to you. In our locker room, that's called the Laker way. In our 34 games this season, our Lakers were 23 wins, 8 losses, and 3 ties. In our league, we finished with 17 wins, 2 losses, and 3 ties. We played in 3 tournaments. In November's tournament in Pittsburgh, we played AA and AAA competition, and we finished 2-2 and and won the consolation game against AAA minor team from Wheatfield. At the Rock and Roll Cup in Cleveland in January, we had to battle the weather and to win 2 games in a matter of hours in a blizzard to win the Tier 2 championship. Sure, it took us overtime, but we did it. In our home tournament, matched up against double-A teams, won a juggernaut from Pittsburgh, we finished in a close third. And finally, we defeated the Wheatfield Blades 4-1 in a well-played championship game. I'm proud of these boys. Sure, it's easy to feel great when you finally win a championship, but I'm proud of them for so much more than that. I'm proud of them because they listen, because they learn, because they ask questions about the game. These kids push each other. They point to the pass around goals. They tap Logan on the pads for a great save, and they'll do the same to opposing goaltenders. They don't complain about officiating. They respect their opponents. They honor the game. They love each other, and they play hard. They play fast, 
and they play smart. I'm so proud of each and every one of them because together they play the Laker way.